Hey what's up YouTube, this is Sad and Mintez. I'm going to start on my first ever installation guide of how to install a VDSL faceplate and mask socket. Okay, at first in the kit will include a an instruction guide, a pack accessories which is screws, clip ties etc, a secondary pack which is exactly identical, a actual faceplate. This is for the actual connection. The actual well, VDSL faceplate. The full VDSL faceplate actually. The Mark II variant. Take off the faceplate and you will expose the actual test socket. This faceplate allows you, which it normally allows you to add more sockets around the home on these other prongs. Basically a DC tool for crimping wires, well not crimping wires, by punching wires into the actual IDCs. Packaging. <laughs> and some more packaging. Right, basically on the right hand side you will see the new PCB board of the Mark II VDSL socket. And on the left hand side you'll see the old PCB board of the old VDSL socket, but this was actually damaged. You can't really see much more resistors or modules etc on the boards, but there are different layouts and configurations, which is probably for different various reasons, which is probably for heat or whatever, or for different static but reducing areas, or for adding more micro filters etc. There's loads of different areas that can be affect these or get a better chances of surviving future enlargements. These new filters can actually support more line speed and higher frequencies and they are supposed to have a RFI filter which is a very good thumbs up. You will need a pliers for cutting and crimping, scissors for taking the sheathing off, an IDC tool, well, not the a screwdriver, well, you actually need two screwdrivers. You actually need a flathead and a poly drive. Full core wire if you want to do a hardware. Flat ADSL cable. A micro filter that is normally supplied by uh, suppliers that you will not need anymore. Basically, by first test, this is with my old a VDSL socket. We remember is that different times of day you will have different effects on your line speed, etc. Congestion from exchange, congestion from people near you, congestion from other things, and line attribution, which is from the exchange to you. I'm approximately 1.9 mile, well, 1.9 kilometers from the exchange, which will affect my broadband by about 40 to 80 percent on speeds. <coughs> In Britain, WBC lines can support 24 megabits. And you see mine is about 14 meg, with a 12 millisecond ping. Always run your test on a, the BTW speed test, which is basically a wholesale speed test. Um, it's moderately accurate. It's actually a diagnostic program that BT and Oak Ridge used and the suppliers used to basically show the best connection or the find out rural areas of your connection. Right then, carrying on with the test. Basically, I'm still on the WBC speed test. Right, so first off, this is my Sky router. This is the number two. Always shut down and power down your router, then disconnect your ADSL cable, then disconnect your RJ. I think it's 45 connected for your phone line, then disconnect the RJ11, which is for your ADSL. Or you just set them back in the front. I can't actually remove this one from the actual jack, which is the, basically the downside of these new uh, ADSL ports on the VDSL connectors, or smash the socket space plates, etc. Uh, you will need this screwdriver on the flathead, which I'm really trying to do, take the actual socket off with one hand, which is kind of very hard to do when you're trying to record with your phone 
So yeah, basically unscrew the screws, pull the face plate off, expose the test socket. Well, and the VGSL socket itself. Take the VGSL socket off, then expose the original face plate and back plate. Unscrew the, f the back plate with a Phillips, I think it's a Phillips, or poly drive, whatever you want to call it. Remove the back plate or test socket, whatever you want to call it. This one I actually bought it together accidentally. Very hard trying to take wires out with one hand. Trying to use the IEC puller, which failed terribly because you've got to have two hands to use a tool effectively. You can't do it with one hand, but you could if you was, you know, checking out or something. Pull the wires away from the IEC prongs, cut the old uh, rip tie, and call it. Remove the cable away, pull off the old thing, chuck it in the bin, job done. Next, cut the wire. Take the sheathing off. Rip a scissors. Cut about an inch away from the face of the wire. Then expose, which is on mine, the orange and white cable. The yellow wires are actually fax cable wires, if I'm right, and the other two are for lower connection for the old ADSL connection. Then put your back plate on, which is your test pocket. Back to front obviously, so then you can actually adjust it. Use a rip tie, tie the cable in, make it nice and tidy. Make sure that's secure. Then take your IDC tool, reroute the wire towards the IDC prongs, push it down slightly with your finger first, obviously. Then take the IDC tool, measure it up over the IDC ports, prongs, whatever you call them. Push down firmly, which is kind of hard against the wall with one hand. I had, you know, stop cording to push down properly. Push your wires in so it's nice and tidy. Cut them off, make sure it's nice and tidy. By All you do now is basically align your back plate or test plate towards your back box. Put in a long thread screw. Then a long thread screw. Tighten desirably. Try not to over tighten because you've got warped box. Then, realign your cable. Make sure you've got a nice smooth arc in the cable, or a bend. Not too steep, not too snappy, for that, because you will damage the cable. Then apply your VDSL faceplate, by the Mark II. Then take a full core cable. This is a four wire cable. It's a full core, which basically means it's no tangled wires. It's just one solid core. Take off one inch of sheath. Move down the vice cables, which are the, I think it's the different color ones. <laughs> I don't know which two color they are. I think they're red and green. Expose the white and the brown. These are the ones you will be pushing near the IDC tool, into the IDC slots. Pins are important. Take one rip tie or clip tie, whatever you want to push it through the hoop, which I didn't show you. Then, first, KL manage, manage around the little node thing you want to call it on the left hand side. Then, cut the clip tie, not actually cut as you cut it away, cut excess. Then, take your IDC tool, align your cables tightly over your IDC connectors. Firmly push them over the AC ports, pins, whatever you call them, and take your AC tool, 
push it in gently. They are a bit fiddly. I'm trying to do it with one hand. It's actually very, very fiddly with one hand, actually. When you are cracked, then you will know that it's actually cut the cable. Take the face plate, complete the face plate, tent plate, what I call that, put it on, screw it in, with short thread, long screws. This is a fiddly part. <sighs> then screw the cable with the, ah, screw them all away into the box. Make sure you're not over tight again. Then take your RJ45, I think it is, your normal telephone cable, plug it in. Then take your HDSL cable, plug it into your router, modem, we're gonna call it. Always make sure your power supply ain't plugged in. Then plug your power supply in. Do a bit of crackling, which is basically me plugging it in. The power's on. Let your modem router boot up. These are my line stats, current line stats. My background that I made. Then go to speed test. Do a speed test. You want to try to do a melt on Milton Keynes if you're British or live in Britain because this will give you the most accurate or moderately accurate test. We remember you got to leave a line overnight or for 10 days for it to re-stabilize or for you to see any difference. You might not see any difference but you should see some CRC or CRF errors whatever you call them dissipate. Then do a BTW speed test. Like always, you will need to wait for the line to stabilize afterwards. You might see an instant improvement over errors. Um, you will see a lot of um, better control of your line be more stable now. So yeah, thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. If you want me more, more tutorials on different things, then just say to me and I'll make one. If you want me to explain to you a bit more about how to install this product, then I shall teach you or show you how to. Thank you.